taking it away from us! Gosh dang it, it's good to see you. Hello friend, Steve Dangle here, and welcome to the best day of the week! It's Thursday, which means it's time for another episode of Steve's Dang It's presented by Advil, where we take a look at the biggest dang it's from around the NHL over the past week. Now listen, oftentimes you'll hear me scream something to the effect of, if you're a goaltender, tend the goal! Now most of the goalies that I see in the comments are like, huh, yeah. But some get a little upset because hey, when I play the puck, I am helping. Okay, can we meet in the middle and say something like, if you're a goaltender, don't try to run out the clock behind the net. Here's Stuart Skinner trying to do that. Sent in by Carlo, final 10 seconds. Skinner will have a decision here. And he turned it over. Krejci, unable to pull the trigger. Dishes, what timer? Will it count? Pasternak got it off. And will it count? This is what happens, especially with this line. It's Krejci that knocks it out of the air. He knows exactly where Pasternak just kind of flares out to that spot, tickles the Raptors a bit, wants that puck. And this is right at the buzzer. Watch this. It's got to be over the goal line at zeros, oh. and it is. This is going to count. Now, before all the Oilers fans get in the comments saying, Hey, we won that game! I know. I know. Stop yelling at me over the internet. Fair point. But this was pretty funny. <laughs> because you could tell Stuart Skinner and a few of the other players who were in the end had a vague idea of how much time was left on the clock. But no one really knew. Skinner mistimed it. He thought he could hold on to the puck behind the net just long enough for the period to expire. It did not. He turned it over with an ill-advised pass, and you can make the argument that maybe his teammates weren't in the best position because they didn't know how much time was left either. The puck finds his way to David Pasternak's stick, which is a nightmare scenario, and he scores. He's good at scoring on nets that are full, let alone ones that don't have goalies in it. That's a dang it. For our next dang it, Peter Kachekov, uh, I mean, he's, he's got a very bright future in the NHL. Like, the Carolina Hurricanes might be the only team in the league whose best goaltender is, like, their third stringer. But he looked more like a third stringer than their best goaltender on this one. What are you doing, Coochie? That's his nickname. You see, they call him Coochie. He didn't see a high volume of shots, and sometimes that's tough on a goalie. You get a chance to get into a rhythm when you play a team like Carolina because they are going to pepper you with chances. I think that's a good point for sure. He was trying to take it away from Kachekov. Spins it from Scott! Jesper Bratt pounds it in after Jack Hughes knocked it away. It's his pressure on the goaltender Kachekov that creates a turnover. He spins around. Gets that puck toward the net. Doesn't quite cross the line. It sits in the blue paint right there. That's just the pressure of Jack Hughes and his quickness and good stick. And then Brad in front takes two swipes at it and finally is able to poke it past the goal line. Right? Gucci? Who told Gucci to do that? Gucci shouldn't have done that. Just for Brad scored because. I I'm sorry, can, can we just show it again? Quite cross the line, it sits in the blue paint right there. That's just the pressure of Jack Hughes and his quickness and good stick. And then that is a Carolina cavalcade of errors. He's gonna have a long career in this league, which doesn't mean he's gonna be bad, it just means we might be seeing him again. Coochie, that's a dang it. Our next dang it is a fight that isn't one. Like, listen, there are very few true heavyweights left in the NHL. There, there's a few more probably in the AHL, which made this the perfect scenario. Ryan Reeves, that is the reigning heavyweight champion of the National Hockey League, taking on Boko Imama, recently called up to the Arizona Coyotes. Two tough customers. Let's see what they do. They talked it warm up, and here we go. Sunday night in the desert. Center ice, baby. And let's see what the kids got. Had a fight last year against Nashville, against Borvietsky. And here we go. Well, they'll do it again. Oh, he kind of lunged, but did Imama. And that might not be the end of it here tonight. And a big smile on Ryan Reeves' face. 
There hasn't been a fight this disappointing since The Undertaker fought Goldberg in Saudi Arabia. Or any Jake Paul fight where he didn't lose. Now Ryan Reeves with the like super slow simmer build to the fight, he's done that before. It's just, it was usually followed by a fight. The mama went for a punch, he missed, they fell down, the linesman intervened, and to me that's the problem. No! No! You can't- no! This was an all-time week for linesmen interfering in fights that should have happened. Bennington versus Reimer, Reeves versus Imama, Bennington versus Flurry, Bennington versus Bennington. Don't worry, we'll get to that. I saw a bunch of people call this the worst fight in NHL history. No, it's not, because at least Imama threw a punch. There was another fight famously in NHL history where no punches were thrown. But this is up there! It's pretty bad. That being said, that's a dang it. For our next dang it, it's actually kind of a hat pick. Here's Pavel Durofiev of the Vegas Golden Knights scoring his first career NHL goal with his head. And it stays 3-3 as Martinez slings it in from center ice. Now the puck in front. And they bang away and a save on Carlson. Rebound, they score! Somehow it got in. Not sure if Dorfiev knocked it in or not. That exactly what's going on here, Dorfiev. Picks up the loose change in front, gets to the net, Carlson bounces it off. I think it goes off of Jordan Bennington on this play here and comes back and hits Dorfee up off of the head and into the net. I mean, that's a what different a, way of using your head to score a goal, John. What a way to score your NHL goal, first NHL goal. They're going to review this. Well, what they're reviewing here is that it wasn't a headbutt motion. I've seen that before where the players believe it or not. First of all, hello Jordan Bennington. We'll be seeing you again much later in this video. Second of all, the shot happens. It deflects off a million things, including Dorofiev's head. Look at him. Look, look at his reaction. Look at it. Can we, can we slow-mo on it, Producer Nick? Look at it. Ow. There's an Advil integration in there somewhere. He, that's, that's using your head. And if it hurt, he can have an Advil. Was that good? I'll do another one later. I do love that they had to review this because you're not actually allowed to headbutt a goal in. You are allowed to have a goal go in off your head accidentally though. Case in point, Andrew Shaw actually scored a playoff overtime winner several years ago, but he headbutted in so they took it back, leading the majority of hockey fans to realize uh, that's actually illegal because how often do you see that? But one time I was at a Toronto Maple Leafs versus Philadelphia Flyers game. Dion Phaneuf was at the point. He took a slap shot. It hit Mikhail Grabowski's head really, really hard and really, really loud. And the whole building went, oh, because ah! he scored. He being Grabowski, not Phaneuf, because Grabowski was technically the last person the puck touched. This one was a little bit more gentle and <laughs> get it out of the net and put some tape around it. That is a first NHL goal to remember. Still a bit of a dang it. You know what? As I was, I don't know, maybe this should have been a hat pick. I don't know. It could be both. Put it in Tuesdays just for a laugh. This next dang it is cruel and unusual torture. Much has been made about the Buffalo Sabres and the fact that they're actually pretty good. Their goaltending's not great, but it's going to be great. Well, the other day against the Dallas Stars, who are looking pretty great, especially since after the trade deadline. The uh, Dallas Stars scored 10 goals on them! And for some reason, Eric Comrie was left in for all 10. Forcing Thompson back into the Buffalo zone. The Donoff drops it back to the line, scores! Stars work on the right side. A little bumper trying to get in front to Pavelski again. Robertson to Pavelski, one-timer beats Comrie on the power play. Instead of getting distracted by it, and... Here's Haskin and walking it down the left side and behind the net center in front. Ben with a one-timer up top. Back to the line, Hanley. Right in front, the puck bounces up over Comrie and the Stars get their fourth. Miller will play it up ahead. Delandria knocked to the ice by Stillman, but the Stars trying to take advantage with a drive to the net. Sooner's the one going, he gets a chance and it gets past Comrie. Stars just hacking out to center, Ben. Down that right side into the Sabre zone. Sends it to the circle, the shot scores! A quick release! 
Turnover in front of the net. Open and Foxa will tap it by Comrie. He continues to play there. He's done a good job tonight. Darlene with a great move to seemingly get in a shooting lane, but then that was taken away. Here comes Foxa right down the middle, and he puts that one top shift. Dylan Cousins trying to cut through a pair of stars. Four checkers is turned over. Hits, fires, and scores. He's getting in front looking for the deflection that time. Just missed Delandria. He's getting in again. Looks far circle. There is the pass. Comrie, no, it's off the pads and in. You know what's amazing is it's not even like Comrie was the worst player on the ice on account of he faced nearly. 50 shots. He faced 49 shots. He still made 39 saves. That's got to be like near a career high. It's difficult to go through a game where you get 39 saves and win. It's just there usually aren't another 10 that went past you. Also, like Dallas, chill. <laughs> like, chill. Just double shift your bottom six at that point. Why? Listen, this isn't the first time that we've seen this. Al Montoya just got absolutely hung out to dry a few years ago because... You gotta rest Carey Price. Sometimes, as the backup, you gotta get hung out to dry to preserve the other guy. So, noble as it was, that's a tough one for Eric Comrie. That's a dang it. You know what? A, a lot of players don't necessarily have the opportunity to look back at any one game and say, that was the worst game of my NHL career. It will never get worse than that. At the very least, Eric Comrie has that. That'll be a fun contract negotiation. It says here, your save percentage wasn't very good. Yes, but if you take out the game where I allowed 10 goals, it's adequate. That's tough. It's dang it. For our next dang it, and I quote from producer Nick, more shots in the... Oh, can't quite clear it yet. Here's Hintz down at the near circle. Shot through traffic. That hit Ben. He drops. Yeah, Ben a pretty tough customer too. When he goes down, that means he's hurting. Oh, uh, he went down in a heap. Yeah, he did. And not getting up too quickly. Let's see. Okay, Hintz going to take the shot right here. Oh, I think it hits him right in the, the midsection there. And I can understand why he stayed down. He's slowly getting up and working that one off. I was like 14 when I discovered I could do that. <laughs> la 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 la, la 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 la, I'm Al's world. <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, now for our next dang it, I, I want to see what you think of this one because I can't decide how I feel about it either. From producer Nick, I don't know how much of a dang it this is, but I can't stop laughing at it. Hmm. Penalty shot from David Pasternak. He whiffs on it, but somehow Alex Daylock sends his stick flying. All right, let's take a look. Pasternak versus Stalock. He misses. Stalock lost his paddle. Pasternak lost the puck. Good for Alex Stalock. Comes into the game halfway through because of the injury to Mrazek and pretty much post to post there. Bites on the first move to the backhand and it looks like Pasternak's got some room to bury Ben. Nick has a point because like this isn't an egregious dang it I mean we've seen players whiff on penalty shots before I guess it's more of a dang it because the Bruins actually had a chance to tie this game sure I know you're down two goals and there's less than 90 seconds left but consider it Chicago but even though it's not the biggest dang it we've seen it is visually funny pretty much post to post there Bites on the first move to the backhand. And the yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, let's allow it. That's a dang it. For our next one, Jacob Markstrom, he's in it again. And I hate to say it, but if you're a goaltender, rely on your teammates making better passes than this. Knocked away, off his stick by Giroux, and Stutzla will clear it. Blake Coleman chases it down. Shakes Kachuk and makes a pass to back, but it hopped away from him. Chuck puts the puck in deep. Oh, he scored! Giveaway! Markstrom and Backlund, a little miscommunication. 
big hit by Giroux to start this off. But that keeps the play alive. It's funny play off the boards, and Markstrom tries to pass it to Backlund, but he jams him with a pretty hard pass. And then Backlund trying to go behind the net to Uyghur, and it hits Markstrom's pad and ends up right in Stutzley's stick. Okay, if you're a goaltender, tend the goal, and this is Markstrom playing the puck and not being in his goal. Generally, I think that's pretty bad. And it also ended bad. I think that's important and obvious. Like, maybe Markstrom should have been somewhere else, but he wasn't. He very visibly wasn't. Like, maybe this guy's so good at his job that, like, like the pucks just hit him. But Backlund fires the puck right into his leg. That causes a kerfuffle and a goal against. Not a fun time. That's a dang it. The Calgary Flames past like entire month has been a dang it. They just, oh my goodness, this season can't end soon enough. Down to the final two, and this one I, I got to see in person. I didn't like it. Here's Jake McCabe, who's a new Leaf, scoring on his own team. Of course, Copper glanced off his stick. McCarr again, ran to it, scores! Deflected in, off McCabe, and the game is tied. And the pass ends up getting blocked. Here's the pass across. They got a chance to get the puck out. Instead, it's McKinnon keeps it alive. This is a shot pass trying to go to 13. And instead, even though he wasn't blasting it, he's trying to go through the legs of McCabe. And it goes off the stick and in. So, Rantanen gets a bit of a break there. And tough one for Samsonov. You see his late reaction as it got deflected. No. Miko Rantanen, who is having... Yet another understated season? When are we gonna start talking about this guy more? He's ridiculous. Puts the puck, that was supposed to be a pass, off of Jake McCabe and into the Leafs net. Now, in fairness to Jake, this is not the first time I have seen a player named McCabe score against his own team, and that own team was the Leafs. Ah, memories. Nonetheless, this was the only goal that the Leafs allowed in this game. It was a 1-1 game heading into the shootout. So when you think about it, the Leafs scored both goals in a two goal game and lost. That's a dang it. And now for our final dang it, gestures vaguely at Jordan Bennington. <laughs> now there seems to be some confusion about the kerfuffle with Jordan Bennington and don't you want more personality in the sport? Of course we do. You know, generally I didn't have a problem with what he was up to prior to him punching Marcus Foligno because listen it's a high scoring game between the Minnesota Wild and the St. Louis Blues neither goalie Marc-Andre Fleury or Jordan Bennington is having a good time but Bennington gets lit up a bit and the Wild are chirping at him and he's chirping back at the Wild and he's trying to get the crowd going like I don't think anyone has a problem with that part you can look at him John at the bench yet again which almost no goalie does and go oh Jordan and I'm sick of his antics but at the end of the day there's nothing wrong with those antics it's good to have heroes and villains what is not good to have is punching a dude in the head with your blocker while you're still holding your stick hartman and the blues bennington coming after him hartman skated through bennington's area and clipped him on the way by in celebration and flurry's over there come all the go. way down to drop oh, the gloves my. but the linesman has a hold of bennington oh, Exception after the goal by Hartman. He had a slight bump in. Bennington went at him right away while the Wild were celebrating. Marc Andre Fleury with no hesitation at all. And Bennington wants this crowd going. Where's Ric Flair? It is wrestling. I think the biggest dang it in all of this is let him fight! He wants to fight so bad! Why do you keep taking it away from him? And more importantly, why do you keep taking it away from us? The linesman breaking up a fight between Marc-Andre Fleury and Jordan Bennington is like if they remade Gladiator and when Maximus and Commodus are about to fight, the guards broke it up. No! No! That's what everyone came to see! Why? 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 And listen, I, I mentioned punching him with the blocker, and that is that is bad. And at the time I'm shooting this, he hasn't been suspended yet, but he does have a hearing. A lot of people are like, oh, he's going to get fined. He's not going to get fined. I think he's going to get suspended. But the fact that he has his stick in his hand matters because 
If a hockey stick is a twig, a goalie stick is a log. You can't be punching a guy with your blocker and you definitely can't be punching a guy with your blocker while you're holding this massive goalie stick. They really broke up Maximus and Commodus. I, I, Google it, it's a good film. But that is a huge Dang it. I wonder how many games he's gonna get. Knowing the NHL Department of Player Safety, it's gonna be like, we've reviewed Jordan Biddington's actions, and as a result, we have suspended Marc-Andre Fleury four games. So that is it for this episode of Steve's Dang. It's presented by Advil. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. <sighs> he wants to fight. Let him.